Good morning. I'm getting ready to sharpen blades and get out mowing. We had a lot of rain last night and it warmed back up. So every time we get a cold front or, or a warm front come through, we get some rain, it seems. Um, it's kind of warmer now and uh, we may end up mowing. You know, this might be one of the years where we mow through uh, into January before we get the real cold set in. Now we had a little bit of cold here uh, the last few weeks, but that's kind of the pattern that we get. All right, so what I'm gonna talk about today, hang on just a second. What I wanna talk about today is, you know, the title of the video is, hey, it's my grass, stay off of it. I've expressed a lot of um, frustration with people coming on to lawns that I mow and mowing them for free, like right after I get done cutting, uh, and then mowing them short. Okay, and the reason I say it's my my grass stay off it, yeah, it's the customer's lawn, but I've cultured and nurtured that lawn into good density, considering it's not a fertilized and irrigated lawn, and for them to come in to either try to undermine my um the quality of my work because their perspective is lower the better um and just and or for the satisfaction of blowing out clippings because everybody that mows one of the things they like to do is when you've got a lot of thick you know grass to go come in there and watch the, cl the clipping spray out. It, it, it's therapeutic, you know what I mean? But the problem is, it's kind of like when I was a kid, I would go to my grandpa's house and not knowing because we were juveniles, grandpa was stalking the pond uh, before we would come and t spending the time to feed the fish in the one area with the, with the pellet feed. And then, so we come to fish and grandpa would be, hey, come on over the, over here, right? So we go over there and catch, you know, 40 fish or something and wouldn't even have the responsibility of even cleaning them. And grandpa would do all that and then clean them too. And, you know, just kind of like, you know, hey, indulging our, uh, you know, youthful uh, excitement of it because he maybe wanted to get us into being you know fishing as a hobby or whatnot so it's kind of like that when i culture a lawn and get it where it's growing nice and dense and thick and and tall and self-shading and then they come in there and they get the immediate you know satisfaction it's like you're taking that away from me because i didn't do that because it wasn't good for the lawn and then in addition i've put in tenfold on the labor because I'm having to have ultra sharp blades. I'm having to set up the machines just perfect to, so that they can mow a tall lawn further off the stem. It's harder to cut and get an even cut. I'm having to double up on the cuts. I'm having to do stand downs because if the lawn isn't needing to be cut, I won't put traffic on that lawn and slow the process of getting that lawn density and everything together. And if you watched any of my other videos, you know what the reasons are. You, you're a lawn that, that that can absorb because it's not in a in a fight or flight state just trying to survive will absorb more uv light it will and, and and that makes less radiation and heat around the house it'll self-shade and retain more moisture it'll uh collect dew because it has more surface area to collect dew between rainfalls so it's getting watered even though there's no rainfall um it, it is in a high growth state. So it's uh, cellulose breaks down and contributes to the petroleum, the fossil fuel layer. Um, it doesn't have as much runoff. So you don't have uh, contamination of lakes and streams with, uh, with excess nutrients, whether they're natural or artificial that cause algae blooms and it makes toxic gas that kills humans and or depletes the oxygen in the waterways and it kills off uh, global uh, food supplies in the form of the fish and the marine life. I mean, and, the, and, and when it's, when it's uh, in high growth mode, anabolic state, instead of catabolic, it, it uh, absorbs more CO2 from even the mower and passing cars 
and emits more oxygen. And, you know, I can't keep going on about what the difference is between mowing a lawn where it's beneficial for the lawn versus mowing below the water line. Now, that's kind of something that's been in my head. I don't know if anybody gets what I'm saying about mowing below the water line. When you mow below the water line, is something I make up. I'm making that term up. You know, water line on a boat, you know, everybody knows where the water line, that's where it sits. But there's a kind of a water line on turf. And if you cut below it, one, you're gonna get clumpings, not clippings. You're gonna come back the next day and after the lawn has shrunk, you know, if you're mowing in the morning, the lawn is gonna shrink, like clothes in a dryer. You mow in the morning, you come back that afternoon if it's a hot, sunny day, and you're gonna lose you're gonna lose a half inch an inch on that lawn. So if it, if it looks like oh maybe I cut it too tall this time, wait till later in the day. And if if that don't make you feel like you made the right decision, wait till later in the week if it's a drought week, and you and you'll come back and you'll be like oh man I'm so glad I I left it that high. Okay, so for all these reasons, it's very annoying to have somebody else come onto a lawn that I'm caring for nurturing, culturing, growth, and density, and do it for whatever reason they think. Uh, it's usually a neighbor, and then because of it being a neighbor, the customer usually is reluctant to address it and say, hey, stay off freaking lawn. I got a lawn guy. You know I got a lawn guy. You just saw him leave, and then you came over here with your freaking mower and, and, and buzzed the damn lawn and, and scalped it. Now, further, in addition to all those issues, all of my decks have, let me flip this around. I can't get these decks anymore. Now, most of you guys are like running new machines every three years. I don't care what you're doing. These machines, I've got balanced perfect. I've got the, the geometry exactly the way I want it. I love the geometry on these older hustlers because I get extension on that side that can wrap around a tree where I can get in and cut out, eliminate a lot of my uh, string trimming. And then uh, and, and where other mowers, this one even, a lot of times to get close up around something, I have to actually do a directional change on my control lever. Whereas this one, it's just a feathering and you're still maintaining the wheel still rotates in the same direction. You're just, you're just swerving around it. And because the tree or whatever you're going around will end up being here, and then just with a slight change of direction, or not a change of direction, just a uh, change of, of uh, speed on this wheel motor, then the next thing you know, the tree's back here where my foot is. And when you come on the next pass, the same thing happens, and there's virtually almost nothing to trim there. Or if there's a fence line with a two rail fence, that side of the deck stays under the bottom rail and the, aside from the post, there's nothing to trim. These 72s cut out so much trimming and these older chassis being short, there's no tail swing to damage uh, property or anything. Um, but the problem is you can't get decks for these no more. So these decks are blown out from sand. They got holes in them everywhere. I have to build my own deck. And where that comes in is when these people come in and scalp a lawn that I'm caring for, now I have to almost follow their cut height because I'm getting, the customer's like, well, come cut. And it's like, I can't make it taller by cutting. So what the best I can do is make it even with the way that this, the guy that come in, the free cutter, and, and so that there looks like a delta between when I arrived and when I leave. So that there looks like a difference, okay? And it's annoying. Even if I don't mow lower than it was when they called me, it's so low from the scalping people that the sand comes up and it, it just keeps eating my deck, that eating away at, the, at what little mowing deck that I still have left. So it's not just a matter of all the time and trouble and you know everything that I put into the lawn to, to make the lawn healthy. It, it's a matter of it's doing damage to my mower. Now, what they don't understand is what they don't understand is on their homeowner machine, they can mow their lawn shorts cutting like that, scalping 
for the rest of their life. The difference is they mow maybe one lawn per week. If I have to deal with that on every lawn, I'm going out and mowing 100 plus lawns per week. Do you see how 100 plus lawns with sand abrasion could do more to a deck than one lawn per week? So the problem with that is I may not get two seasons out of a steel deck. Now, interestingly to point out is that polycarbonate like they use on the bottom of, I don't see if I got any, I know I got some behind there, but I'm not going to take it out. Like they use on the bottom of uh, airboats for when they want to skid across the street and stuff. And I think they make liners or dump trucks and stuff out of it. But anyway, it doesn't seem to abrade at all. I've ran it for years on, on a machine. So it will protect the steel. But then you've got two layers and it tends to be moisture and stuff build up between the two. And then it can promote rust. Now, if you put it on right away, a new machine that still had a healthy powder coat, you'd probably be good for a long time if you did the deck skin the way I make deck skins for my machines. Now, just the thing is, I haven't had time to make them for this because I just really switched to these older 72s uh, recently. Now, I have one that's already cut out for a 60, and I will put it on that 60 because I have to keep it around for a couple lawns where they, they got uh, the gates that I can't get through. And if somebody's got a gate smaller than that, I'm just saying no to people. I don't even really want to keep it around. So that one's going to get skinned first because the last thing I want to do is have to remanufacture a deck for a mower that I really don't like using and I don't really want to keep around. These ones will be the ones that I want to uh, preserve. Uh, all right, well, that's the end of my rant for today. Hopefully everybody's having a, a good day and uh, enjoying their slower schedule for me it just gets faster and faster because i'm always trying to make improvements on my equipment and efficiencies for next year uh, everything from uh well going to be obviously having to recreate these decks and either steel or or i was thinking of something else but um it's kind of a tall aspiration so there's no point in getting into it and creating the mini mo truck and then get and cleaning up uh, mistakes that I've made in venturing into other stuff. And, and what I don't want to do this year is waste time on stuff that barely makes money or, or makes less money than mowing just to stay busy and then coming into the next season not ready to be all that I can be. We only got a few months to deal with here and I'm going to have my mini mow truck ready to see if that's something I want to do. I'm going to have lightened trailers and stuff, lightened mowers, uh, make it easier for the tow vehicle, um, you know, not necessarily about being, you know, lighter on the lawn, but that is beneficial. So I've got a, a lot stacked up to do, and it's going to be a busy off season, and I'm going to get to it. Y'all have a good day.